Damien here at Apache headquarters. I'm doing another quick review. Today I have in my hands the Precision Grinders. Precision are you know, well known for their accessories and they do make a coffee machine um, out of Italy from Bieppe, um, a Precision Vela. But today I have their grinders in my hands. So they do have a range of espresso and filter grinders, the GS series. This is the GSP grinder, P standing for push. Um, so it is a Domestic grinder, um, very well made. So there are a lot of grinders under the $500 mark and that's what these um, guys come in under at about the, you know, $400 mark. We, um, we have a very well made grinder. So it's a very, very sturdy body. We have rubber suction feet for stability. It has 60 mil flat burrs, a 250 gram hopper and a 250 watt motor. Exactly the same size motor as a Mazda Mini. So it's got great power. Um, I really like these grinders. I think they're very good, very good value for money. So I'm just gonna have a quick, uh, you know, grind and um, we'll put some uh, dimensions on the website as well. Actually, I might do that now. I might measure and well, let's see how big they are because they, do, they have a very small footprint. So these guys with the hopper, they're under 40 centimeters tall. Um, and they are very, very narrow at about 120 mils wide, so 12 centimeters wide. Very, so we have two modes with this grind. I'm gonna turn this one around. Um, so with this mode here, the grind is just going to run without the use of the micro switch. And then the middle setting is the grinder's off. And then if I push it forward, that means it's only controlled when I press the micro switch. So it's very, very easy to use. To adjust the grinder, we're just holding down this little clip here and we're adjusting the grinder like so. So when I dial in a grinder, if I'm ever making coffee from a completely brand new grinder, I always let the burrs touch. So I wind it completely fine until the burrs are completely touching. So I've got two burrs, I've got a top burr and a, and a bottom burr, and we're just basically letting them lock on. So I let them completely lock on by making it as fine as I can, and then I back it off about two centimeters. And that is a very good starting point for your grind. Now obviously grind changes depending on brands and roasts. Um, I always, best advice I give to people buying coffee machines and using coffee at home is to stick to the same brand. I know people like to play around and try different flavor profiles. When you do do that, you will tend to adjust your grinder a lot more. So if you're buying a 200 gram of coffee to try, sometimes it takes 50 or 100 grams to get that grinder dialed in. So um, there is a bit of wastage there. So sticking to the same brand and roast profile makes it a lot simpler. Um, I'm gonna grind some coffee, let's go. Um, with these grinders, what I like to do is use a dosing cup. I think, so there is the GSP, I'm gonna jump over, if you can just pan over here, there is the GS7 version. So the GS7 version is exactly the same except it has a screen. So you can program your dose based on time. So that option is a, you know under the $600 mark, so it's a very well bit grinder, exactly the same as the GSP, it's called a GS7 though. Comes in. So guys, when I um, do this, I might get a lot of comments, but I just wanna show you or let you hear what the sound is of burrs touching. Um, so I'm gonna put this into grinding mode, and then I want you to hear that. That's burrs touch again. So that is a screechy sound. So that's what it sounds like when your burrs are touching. Um, if I do find this grinder up too much and you've got a darker roast with a lot of residue that's, you know, darker roasts are quite oily, um, you can potentially get a blockage in this. So again, clear that blockage. If you have no coffee coming out, make sure obviously your little chute's open here. Okay. Um, also, there is a safety switch at the back of this grinder here. 
that resets the power if you do get that grinder locked on. So unblock it and then make it super coarse and then dial it back in by letting the blades touch and backing it off about two centimeters. Very good starting point. So I'm a big fan of screenless grinders or grinders without programs um, in the domestic market. So what I do is I buy myself a set of scales and a dosing cup and the reason, or there's three advantages to that. So one is to get a perfect dose every time. The second reason is it's mess free. The third reason is I can collapse and distribute quite well with a dosing cup. So I'm gonna show you. This is the old way or this is another way you can do it. So obviously you can, that grind is a bit too fine. I'm gonna course it up. So you can hear that unblocking. So I can do it like this and I can collapse and I can get my dose like that. But you can see there is a bit of coffee spraying around the edges. All right, and then when I dose, how do I know I'm getting 19 grams every time in an 18 gram basket? We always put an extra gram in. How do I know I'm always getting the same dose? So the benefit of the dosing cup is exactly that. So it's cleaner and it's more accurate. I'm running out of coffee, but I might be able to just get there with my 19 grams. 18.6, not bad, Damien. All right, so I've got my 19 grams in there, 19.4. And when I collapse and distribute, I do like that. I pretend I'm making a little coffee cocktail. And then I'll do a little distribution with my fingers, make sure there's no air pockets in that, and then I'll tamp. And I'm mess free, I'm accurate, and I am making good distributed coffee for nice even. Water finds the quickest way, so if there's a little, any little air pockets in there, you're gonna get an uneven, an uneven flavor profile and bad distribution really causes that. So that is pretty much it, guys. So maintenance on these guys. I'm just gonna show you quickly how well built these are made. How well built these are made, that doesn't really make sense, but you know what I mean. These guys are really put together well, so they don't have many plastic components. They've got a very good stainless steel, sturdy, durable body, and I'm just gonna show you how to, you know, like the weight in that is really good for a grinder under 400, you know, $450. It's a very good and very well made grinder. Um, so, um, just be mindful guys, if you do take this um, collar off and you wanna get a brush in there in a vacuum, that's a very good way to clean it, but that thread can be clean. And when you wind this back on, just make, make sure it grabs naturally. So cross-threading is an issue. So we're just making it fine again, and we're just winding it back down. So that's cleaning on a grinder for home. You know, every year you could get in there and give it a wipe and a clean, don't ever get it wet. Um, I'm just gonna make sure that switch is the other way around. I'm doing this from the other side. So I'm gonna go right up a bit and let's turn that switch around. Oh, a bit more, a bit more, a bit more. There we go. Now I can go down. And I'm gonna get back to where the blades are touching and then I'm gonna back it off. You can put a little mark on your grinder here. Again, guys, if you change brands of coffee and roast profiles, this is gonna fluctuate. Um, you know, coffee is affected by a word called malt, moisture, air, light, and temperature. So um, consider all those factors as well when you're dialing in your grinder. But the first part of the story when dosing is the volume. Second part is particle size. So once you have those two, you know, two parts of the story, you're gonna extract better coffee. So I just wanted to also state that these guys are made in China. Um, a lot of people are deterred by things made in China, but for me, um, some of the greatest products that we buy are made in China. The holy grail of grinders niche are made in China. Apple phones are made in China. There's nothing really wrong with things made in China. There are some bad things made in China, but these are a product that are made well. Um, so they're made from the Precision brand, assembled in China. I think, you know, for under $450, Comparably, there's a, a, a Rancilia Rocky grinder, there's a Barazza grinder, there's an Isomac Grand Machito and uh, Professionale. There's a couple of other brands you could choose from, but I would choose this over them every day. Um, and for a lot of reasons, they're just made well. They grind well, they've got six, they're very similar to a Maza Mini. Um, same size motor, um, burrs are similar, 60 mil flat burrs. So um, it's a winner, I think, guys, and you can head to departure.com.au and get yours today. Again, they come in black and white. This is white, that's white, but it's black and white, you know what I mean? Um, and then if you want to get the programmable version and disregard everything I said about the scales and the dosing cup, you can get the GS7.